All right, well, just so when you think you know what you're doing, life throws at you the hockey NHL trade deadline. And it creates a curveball. So Razor and I were going to record Morning Brew uh, late Sunday, uh, given that uh, both had very busy weekends and have busy Mondays, albeit good busy. And then we start, uh, you know, I don't know if that's really the smartest thing. And lo and behold, it wasn't. Because the Boston Bruins make not one but two deals in a matter of relatively speaking minutes on Sunday night after they got throttled 8-1 to one to the Washington Capitals and really did us a huge favor <laughs> by making these deals. So we don't have to talk about that game or really even the game on Saturday against Philly. Uh, Bruins lose both over the weekend, both in regulation. Philly on Saturday, 3-2. As they said, Washington on Sunday. Missing a lot of players, et cetera, et cetera, all that stuff. It is what it is. Buffalo did him a huge favor. Not once, but twice this weekend, though, Razor. Especially on Sunday, it proves two times as the Buffalo Sabres beat the Philadelphia Flyers on Sunday. And then... Late Sunday night, again, the Bruins pull off the deal to bring Taylor Hall to the Bruins. All right, let's get right into it. We got 20 minutes of morning brew, a, a big-time fresh coffee, big time. Do you have your cold brew or no? Are you, are you no, ready? No, I didn't even. No? Just popping up and going. All right, good. All right, so good morning yeah. from Jaffe and Razor here on Morning Brew. Um, the Taylor Hall deal. Taylor Hall and Curtis Lazar come for Anders Bjork and a second-round pick. Uh, Boston also, in an earlier deal, about an hour earlier, gets Mike Riley, defenseman from the Ottawa Senators, for a second, um, I'm sorry, a third round pick in 2022. Let's get right to the Hall deal with Lazar. Um, I don't mind the price. I wasn't going to be, you know, rooting. I, I wasn't going to be happy if this was a first round pick or, and they did that razor, but um, why not? Why not? Yeah. For, you know, this, for, for Bjork uh, and a second round pick. Um, and Buffalo retains half his salary. And you get Curtis Lazar. So let's just straight up start with your take on, on Taylor Hall coming to the Bruins. I'm, I'm with you 100%. The price is right. Price is right, Bill. They, mm -hmm. uh, to not, and, and you know, on Buffalo side, they might look at Bjork a little differently. Bjork wasn't ever going to be a top six forward in this organization. So you get you get Taylor Hall, which I, we know what he's done this year and the struggles he's had. But mm -hmm. you give hope. You give optimism. You give everybody uh, on the Bruins or team, the players, a pat on the back, a we believe in you. Go get this done. It you changes must all, the yeah, mindset. Sorry, yeah, it's real sorry to interrupt, but you you must also think, Razor, that your team's getting healthy. Mm -hmm. And that's a that has to be a part of this, right? They get I mean, meaning of course you hope that your team stays healthy, but you have to know that your big dogs that are out are getting healthy. From everything I have been hearing, Carlos the one that is still the question mark. That he's still a couple of weeks away, but everybody else has got to be coming back within the next couple of days. Otherwise, I don't know if you even make this deal. Then I'm not sure mm -hmm. if you do. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And you you look at they've the the issue was going into this weekend, and and I thought the the hard part about all of this was going to be assessing their team and what their team actually was with all the injuries they've had, with the inability to to actually put a full roster out on the ice the last few weeks is, is where their team's at and what their assessment is. And we figured we found out their assessment is pretty high of this team still. Again, they, they didn't mortgage the farm, but mm -mm. they went out and got the biggest forward that was out on the market. And they added uh, another defenseman, left shot defenseman that everyone wanted. He's a top six guy. And you got a right winger that, from people in Canada thought this kid, he's a first round pick. They thought he was going to be a 15 year NHL thousand game type player. Now he's had injuries. He's had issues, but if he's healthy, he brings a, a physical energy skill dynamic as well. So that, listen, the Bruins went for it. They, they've had as good a night as, as anyone else did in the league. I'd agree. 
It's interesting, though, that you say both players regarding Hall and Lazar, if, 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 if. Now, there's no guarantee. We understand. Come on. Like, you know, we know that there's no guarantee that any deal is going to work out. But aren't there other deals in the past that you would say, that's going to work. That's good. Meaning, like, you know what you're going to get. The Bruins truly don't know what they're going to get. They hope they know what they're going to get Mm -hmm. out of these guys. Uh, Quickly, we'll do Lazar. And not to disparage him but he's the second piece to the puzzle but you mentioned a, a, he's almost was iconic for that short time in Canada with he his was. team Canada world juniors and as you said first round pick um do you think he's legitimately a top candidate for the fourth line or is he a is he a, a ninth floor type of guy and you put him in if where where do you think he's he fits like no, he's been I injured see, I- I, I, if he's healthy, he's he's their best option on the right wing. He's their best option for that fourth line. We've seen all the pieces come in and out of the lineup. You, he has that ability. Again, he has the highest ceiling out of all of those players. Um, I think too. Listen, he was in Ottawa. He was in Buffalo. I, I think they also look at both of these guys. They have to look at both of these guys saying. If we get these guys in our building, we get these guys under our culture, we get these guys playing with Patrice Bergeron, Brad Marchand, David Krejci, David Pasternak, they're going to be elevated. Charlie McAvoy, Tuka Rask. They, these guys haven't played with these players before. Mm-hmm. Neither of them have. And, and I got to imagine that the through the research, through their homework, doing these deals, they said, we can elevate these players. And I think you have to, uh, you, you talk about that, you know, if, if, you know, but I think the, from the Bruins point of view, that it's a, it's a pretty good gamble to, to think that these guys are going to elevate getting here. All right. Well, Curtis Lazar has five goals as of the trade coming here. I'm just looking at fourth line output. Frederick has four goals and an assist. Wagner, two goals and three assists. Corelli, two goals and two assists. So he becomes their top scoring fourth liner. I would call him an aggressive player. I would not call him overly physical, but I'd call him when he's on, he he's aggressive. He's not what you would consider just a high-end perimeter skill guy. Mm-hmm. Um, so can he play center? Meaning could you could you put him at center and move Corelli to left wing? Is that an option? It, it is. It is. And, and that's another part of his game where he can be a little bit of that jackknife and, and go move around on the bottom half of the forward lines where necessary. Okay. You know, you bump him up if he's playing well onto that third. It, it just gives one more forward depth piece. And the fact that you get Taylor Hall, it, it that adds, you're adding two NHL players on your front 12. And again, I, these deadline deals, just as, as much as anything, is to spark everybody else. And, and yeah. I'm positive that the rest of this group last night, this morning, are a lot more excited than what they were after the 8-1 drubbing. And they're looking at it like, all right, we have more than enough pieces now to compete with, uh, with the teams that we need to in our division. Right. And I'm not, I wasn't trying to bury the lead, which is Taylor Hall. I was just trying to make sure that we got to Curtis Lazar a little bit to say why yeah, no, also no, no. Curtis Lazar. Of course. Right? And, and, and what can he legitimately bring in? Let's, you know, let's hope. And, and here's the other thing. He's making $800,000, which is less than other guys you have on your fourth line. I, I, I'll say this right now. It would not shock me. I would say, I believe 75% the Bruins are done making moves. Yet it wouldn't shock me if they made one more move. And maybe move somebody that's currently on their fourth line. Um, they still need they know they need bodies for that fourth line, but Lazar could be a piece, or maybe at the end of the year, one of the guys who's under contract or could be done will be gone. It's just the way the business works. And you go from guys making a little over one to one point two million to now making eight hundred thousand. Every dollar counts in the salary cap, especially considering that it will be a flat cap again next year, Razor. So Lazar could end up saving you, I'm gonna say five hundred grand. When it's all said and done. So yep. that's one thing that you got to keep in mind. Now, let's get to Taylor Hall. Then we'll get to Mike Riley. All right, Taylor Hall comes in. No question, as you said, the big fish out there, right? However, he's also been the big 
it's kind of like the biggest question mark of anybody out there. From going to Buffalo for a one-year deal, which didn't sit well with many people, including me, in the sense, I mean, I get I get what he was trying to do, okay? Well, mm -hmm. Eichel's there. I get, and Ralph Kruger's there, you know, the guy he loved when he was with Edmonton, the coach, for a couple years. And, you know, it should be an up-and-coming team, and he's going to play a ton. He's going to play a shitload. And he can have the puck on his stick and everything. It, it's an understatement to say it hasn't worked out, but then again, it hasn't worked out for anybody in Buffalo. My other ca cautionary issue with him was his knee, or is his knee. You know, he's had knee injury a couple of years ago coming off that MVP season in, in New Jersey. With all that said, because of how the price was not exorbitant, I'm still good with it. Now, I'm like, okay. Now, he's got to be betting. He's betting on himself even more now, Razor. He did it in Buffalo for that one year, $8 million, and now... He has got to come through with the Boston Bruins if he wants a multi-year deal from, forget the Bruins, from anybody else in the NHL right now. That's right. He's He he got the pass for scoring only two goals in, in 40 games in Buffalo uh, for struggling and for that team struggling. He got the pass, and now he's here in Boston with – a bunch of pieces around him that are going to make him and allow him, give him opportunities to score goals, to make plays. And a team that, that now you, you look at it should be winning playoff series as well. When they get back to up hundred percent health and, and whatever that means in the NHL, get all their guys back. They, they should be winning playoff series. And Taylor Hall is going to have to be a big part of that. Now he's going to have to be the spark for David Krejci for David Pasternak for some of Jake DeBrusque for Charlie Coyle that this has to be they have to use this as a spark to all right this is the second half of our season we need to get going everything that's happened prior to now has just got us to this point that that we're we're in a playoff spot but now we're a team that needs to win and is expected to win now he has only played in the playoffs twice 1718 with New Jersey, and then 1920 when he got shipped to Arizona, and he ended up playing there. He's basically a point a game player in the playoffs 14 games, 12 points, four goals, and eight assists. But he's only played two rounds each time his team lost in the first round. He was an absolute beast when he played with the New Jersey Devils in that season when they made the playoffs, when he won the MVP, when he deserved the MVP. He pretty much put him on his shoulders on his back, and he got them into the playoffs. He, he did. He was phenomenal. He was a man on a mission there. Um, since then, it's been spotty. Now, he had some partial seasons after that. He goes 93 points in New Jersey. Then he has another – I shouldn't say spotty because the next year in New Jersey, he was 33. He had, he had been injured, but he still are, are, got 37 uh, points that year, so a point-a-game player. But then he ends up going – 1920 between New Jersey and Arizona, and he still ends up being just under a point a game. But now the pressure is on him squarely to perform in an environment that he's never been in before. When he was with Edmonton, he was supposed to be the savior, right? Taylor Tyler draft mm -hmm. he goes there in 2010. Yeah. He's supposed to be the savior. And those teams were, for the most part, and I don't have year by year numbers in front of me, they weren't that good. And I think no, I'm being kind. Flat out bad. Yeah. Um, right. He has never been in a winning environment. And that's the biggest unknown. How does he does he absorb every moment of being around Bergeron, Marchand, McAvoy, Tuca, etc.? <clears throat> Excuse me. Or does he try and just say, I'm here and I'm going to do my Taylor Hall thing? Which is score, but you know. Razor, that's to me the biggest unknown. What does he what is his mindset now? It's not like he's a 20-year-old pro that is being molded. He is fully molded right now. Is he going to open his mind? I don't know him personally. I'll tell you this much. The only thing I know about him I've, is he he actually gives very good answers in his media. He's very thoughtful and he gives real good, uh, thoughtful answers. But is he going to have that mind learning from these guys around him and say, holy smokes, I have this opportunity. I don't have to be Taylor Hall, number one pick. I can just be Taylor Hall, Boston Bruin. And if he's got that attitude and he's willing to learn, again, I go back to it. The price was not steep yeah. at all. 
then this could be for him, even if he doesn't stay with the Bruins, holy smokes, Razor, this could be this could be one of those career altering moments for him. Yeah, he can change his narrative. He can change his narrative now and become um, a clutch player, a uh, winning player, a guy who comes in and, and plays a team game and really adds to it as a superstar. And to uh, I've got to imagine that, listen, the Bruins wouldn't, wouldn't have made this deal if they don't feel like he can do that. They wouldn't, they wouldn't ruin, the core wouldn't accept it. Uh, we know what this core accepts and doesn't accept. Uh, the Orb Bruins, the, the Don Sweeney understands that as well. So there's conversations been had with everybody involved. If they, you know, through the grit, you know, who, what do you think of this guy? Who knows this guy? What What's the real book on this? Players talk to coaches, GMs all the time about these things. And, you know, we'll, we'll do, what do you guys think of this? And, and that doesn't mean that they do the deal. They just, you know, get right. some, get some background on it a little bit, some inside info from the player's point of view. So I, I don't believe they wouldn't, they would do this if they weren't convinced. I mean, listen, it's different being a hundred percent positive and, and that's the beauty of sports and hockey is this is going to be fascinating to see how this plays out in the next four or five weeks. It's going to be it's going to be must-see theater. There's no question. Uh, I just got to believe that Taylor Hall is in a place where he made a bit of a mistake going to Buffalo, in my opinion, doing the mm -hmm. one-year deal. But he can again, he has an opportunity to change the narrative now, and I would imagine his pride and his character are going to want to do just that. Yeah, I would sure hope so. Now, his shooting percentage is 2.3% this year. Uh, for his career, he's a 10% shooting 10% shot percent average. Shooting That's percent a massive drop-off. <laughs> right, right. Uh, now, a lot of that was the first four years of his career. But then, in 17, 18, 14%, that year he was with New, uh, uh, that year was with New Jersey when he put up 39 goals. I don't think he's, look, he's probably an 8% guy when it's all said and done. Yep. Right. So yep. that's still a huge jump. Now, let, let me ask you this about fit. He likes the puck on his stick. Uh, I've talked to my buddy, Mike Kelly, in the years who runs Sport Logic up in Canada. And Taylor Hall has always been the guy off the rush, a rush chance guy, rush chance guy. Right. I mean, the number one of the top guys in the league regularly chances off the rush. If we assume and do we want we'll play the line game in one minute here. Um, if he, if we assume he plays with a guy like Krejci, okay, as we play the line game, actually, I'm, I'm getting into it. But both Krejci and he like to have the puck on their stick. Does this, does that work on paper or in 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 the podcast world as we pontificate about lines? Does that work? I mean, you got to, don't you have to start with that combination, Hall and Krejci? And it, by the way, this is also a little bit of a kick in the you know what to Krejci saying. Here you go. Get yep. going again, big boy. You were moving earlier. Get going now. No, it, it has to energize him. It has to. And I, I think to to the question is, do, do they have to? I think that, well, I know David Krejci is smart enough to figure it out. I'm pretty sure Taylor Hall has been around long enough. I think he can figure it out playing with a guy with Krejci. I, I would look at his... The fact that he has the puck on his stick all the time, I might suggest goes to who he's played with over the years and the fact he hasn't been in the playoffs. He went to Edmonton, the first overall pick. He was he was Connor McDavid before Connor. He was the fastest guy out on the ice when he was 18, everybody. So he just flew around the ice and those rush chances, he was always on his stick. And, yep. you know, he drove the bus in New Jersey, like you said. In Buffalo, he's felt like he had to do that. So I would... I would guess that he can figure it out. I know David Krejci can figure it out. I know he can figure out how to get him the puck at the right times. And it's going to, it might take a little bit of time. It might give, give him two weeks, give him two and a half weeks to figure it out together. But, um, but they will figure it out. Krejci will. They better. And they, 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 be, it, it, for both of them, you know, Krejci at the end of his deal, so is Hall. Krejci at a different point in his career. But for it to work, Razor, Krejci's going to have to increase his pace. 
he's going to have to a little bit, and Hall's going to probably have to give up the puck a little bit. You know what I mean? It, to, to, to make it work. Um, it's if Look, Taylor Hall had the knee injury a couple of years ago. Is he the same Taylor Hall with regard to explosiveness? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I can't measure his speed per se. The eye test says no. I keep going back to this in the same thing that you do too. The players that he's played with, eye test-wise, or on roster, <laughs> aren't the same as what he has yeah. here. So if if he can increase that intensity, that pace, and that finish, and I go back to a shooting percentage, just get it up to 5%, 6%. (laughs) You know what I mean? I mean, all of a sudden, that's a ton of goals. Different. Because the two goals that he has and the minus 21 and the minus plus minus isn't the end-all be-all anymore. He's he's been really bad this year. (laughs) Yeah, he's just – It's it's been bad there. This is a reclamation project of a house – that you look at and somebody has to say, I see the beauty in it. It's kind of like, you know, waterfront property. Yeah, but man, a, there's been the some dumpiest big... house on the nicest street right now. Right, right. Yeah. It, and there's been a flood. There's been a flood in it, you know, <laughs> and you can't hide the water damage, right? The, the inspector yeah, won't let you right. hide the But if you can figure out a way to fix it, holy shit, you got yourself a nice house. Mm-hmm. And let let's hope that I don't even need a mansion. I just want a really nice rebuilt house, you know, and if mm-hmm. that's what the Bruins get here, maybe they have something. Let's hope. Um, so Taylor Hall, Curtis Lazar, Hall a lefty, Lazar a righty. Let's play the line game real quick. Then let's move to Mike Riley on this morning brew with Jaffe and Razor, and, and we'll touch on that for a few minutes and then get everybody's day going. Um, uh, the line game. Bergeron or Marchand, we got a pair. Mm-hmm. Do we agree? Do we agree that the next pair, Krejci? Now, is it with Hall and Pasternak, or is it Krejci and Hall and question mark? We're, we're, let's just start with that. So Bergeron, Marchand, and who on that right side? You put Pasta back up there. Okay, yeah. I think I'm. I, I I think that's what they'll do. I'm leaning towards Craig Smith. But I, 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 but but I don't think they'll do that. So I would love to see Smith there, but I think they're going to go Pasternak as well. So I'll I'll give that to you. All right. So now yeah. your next line. Then you're talking Hall, Krejci, and are you talking Craig Smith there, or are you talking who there? I uh, Craig Smith for those reasons of Krejci and Hall having the puck on their stick all the time. Smith goes in the corner. Smith shoots the puck. Smith should keep pace she can he can bring pace with that line so i'll go smith now are you i'm leaning towards that question mark for now because i think they really want richie coil and smith to be that line i i um, and that would have been my caveat as well i, I think they want to f- richie on with Cre- i think they like that crazy richie yeah I, and they I should think they do and but I think, think Richie deserves it too. Okay, but but then Richie goes with Coyle. Richie Coyle is it DeBrusque on the right wing? I mean, as the lineup is con- and constructed right now. Yeah, you have to find a way to get him going and get him in the top nine. You can't have Jake DeBrusque on the on your bottom four. I don't think. I, I mean, you can. I, I get it in theory you do, but I think this again has to. But you have to nobody else to put it right, and, you, and truthfully, you have nobody else to put on that right side. That's right. Unless maybe Lazar gets the the original honeymoon, right? That that happens often. Hey, let's see what this guy is. Let's put him there. Let's see. Maybe they catch lightning in the bottle with Coyle that's, and Lazar for for whatever reason, right? That's when I think that they're not done. That's why I think they may not be done. I mean, because because with guys on injured reserve and maneuvering of the salary cap, let's not forget that they can still make some manipulations to their board and they can then add. And then remember once the playoffs begin, there's no cap. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going totally, and, and it wouldn't surprise me if I mean, if they move somebody off and, and Andre Kasha, yes, I have to say the name here. We haven't seen him. I do not plan on him coming back. Mm-hmm. And I don't even know if he'd be effective coming back, 
But there is that as maybe they just say he's better, but we know we got to wait till the, you know, we're going to keep him on long-term IR and add another player that's not that, you know, maybe, and then bring him to. That could be. We got a a, a guy who, uh, you know, Dominic, our buddy Dominic, who follows along, who does real nice work online. I don't know if you check it out on social media or not with the Bruins cap manipulation stuff. Since I'm not that good at that shit, I don't know if you are or not. Maybe we bring him on or get some questions from him or something. And and, yeah. and those are the kind of things that that make it better. But, yes, I know that they can manipulate the cap, and they might still. Um, okay, so we – and then the fourth line is a mixture, right, of as it's constructed right now, the Corrali, the Wagner, the Frederick, right, yep. Lazar. Yep. Okay. We'll see. Uh, by the way, Frederick is still sick. Not COVID. I mean, I, I reached out about that on Sunday, and yeah, he's he's still sick. So I, I hope he's all right. I mean, that's a long term term thing. Um, all right, Mike Riley from Ottawa comes in. Let's touch on him for a minute or two, and then we'll get everybody on their day, and we're going to be talking more about this. Uh, Mike Riley comes in. I got to tell you, at at first, I wasn't I wasn't wowed with this. Uh, they need a healthy left shot. They need. He's got decent size. He's got good wheels too, Razor. I remember doing yep. games with him when he was at Minnesota. Um, high draft pick, held out. Or didn't sign originally with Mini. Ends up or with Columbus. Goes to Mini. I keep screwing up my teams with him. It ends up going to um, uh, uh, Montreal. Now Ottawa. The Bruins get him for a third round pick in 2022. 19 assists. On the season, he would already be. He's in the top what three or four of assists for the if he's on the Bruins. Maybe not. Uh, maybe a good sneaky deal. I, again, I don't want to sit here and say the end all be all. His deal is up. Ottawa couldn't re-sign him. That's why they traded him. But maybe a good deal under the radar deal for the Bruins here. It checks boxes. Left-handed defenseman skates well. Nineteen points. He's a half a point a game guy right now, and I, I get it. Again, that's in Ottawa, so. Does that transfer? I, who knows? But I don't know. Yeah. What we've, what I've seen from our the Bruins' defense, and, and their, we've talked about their inability to get pucks through the net at times. We've talked about getting their pucks sh- blocked. This guy can get it through, and, and that's why he has those assists as well. Is he's getting pucks through to the net? Mm-hmm. It's getting, it's getting into that pig pile. It's getting pucks, you know, rebound. It's creating chances, shots closer to the net. So he checks all the boxes. Listen, they need a left-handed guy. There, there was they needed somebody on the left side, and yeah. they got a 27-year-old kid that can move the puck, that can skate, that is an NHL defenseman for a third-round pick. So again, you go to the the. It's just like the same the old saying: "There's no bad players in the NHL, just bad contracts." It's similar on trade deadline day. There's there's no bad trades if you're you know you're not giving anything up. So mm-hmm. you bring a guy in, and there's there's less risk on this play, and he's a left hand defenseman. That again, I'll just keep saying a left hand defenseman. That with what they rolled out there this weekend, the, it's a massive upgrade. Right. So he averaged this year eighteen and a half minutes. He's been given a nice role by DJ Smith in Ottawa. You know, uh-huh. uh, let, and DJ what, Smith he, is a tough coach, guys. Like he 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 is. He's You're not right. Giving ice away, even though Ottawa stinks, he's not giving it away to just. A random player who doesn't play the right way. Yeah, uh, he's. I checked with my buddies in Ottawa over the night. Over the night, Jesus. Overnight. Maybe it's too early for me. The coffee hasn't kicked in. It's over the uh, night, though. It, somehow. <laughs> it's true. Um, he has been good for the Senators. They say he has been good. My concern with him is that you know, here's a kid coming out of college. He didn't like you know where he was where he was going to go it was he was drafted by columbus he wanted to he got a deal with minnesota where he's from plays a couple of years there he ends up then going uh to montreal plays a year and a half there and then he goes to ottawa i mean he's been around for a short term in the nhl Mm -hmm. that's the new age player though it is they kind of want to have their way and they get to more often than not um i wouldn't call him overly physical good size six one about a little under 200 pounds um, but you know, the biggest question, 15 of his 19 assists have been even strength razor. Yep. The biggest question is, as you said, does it translate from one to another? Meaning where there's no pressure with the Ottawa senators, none. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> no pressure and on that. Listen, team. there's no to to as much as Danny Smith's trying to make culture there. There's there's no culture. There's no structure there. There's a bunch of young kids flying around the ice. It's it's a much different dressing room in Ottawa than what it is here in Boston. Yeah. So so we have to see how that translates. Now we've got COVID protocol for him. Well, for all of them, for Lazar, uh, for Hall. Now, Lazar and Hall, it's different, I think, than Riley. If you remember, Jared Tenorti was able to drive yep. from Nashville to Boston a couple of days. I've driven across the Mass Pike 90 interstate a hundred times. So Taylor Hall and Lazar could be here this afternoon in their, and, uh, I'm sure, yes. Mercedes Benz. Yeah, I, I, I probably Mercedes truck. I would, I would yeah. think there's got to be an SUV or a or a yeah, very a, high powered sports car. He's a G wagon guy, probably. I would see that. Yeah, I, I could see that for sure. They're they're ripping across the pike today for sure. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully they've got Easy Pass so they can just you know whatever <laughs> it, you know. The, right. um, um, but they will have to do a little quarantine. It will. They they, they probably won't be able to play against their Buffalo. Well, Hall, no, for sure. I'm um, I'm sorry. Lazar for sure, no. But uh, I don't think Hall will either. I'm going to guess he won't play on, on Tuesday. And we'll get all the, the parameters of that today. Uh, the testing will happen. The Bruins are in the midst of, what is it, a five-game homestand after the, the Washington game. Then they got Buffalo, and then they got the Islanders twice coming up, and then back to Washington, I think, again. They play again on Sunday. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. But Riley will fit in into your top six, no doubt, no doubt about it. Let's just play this game real quick, and then we'll wrap it up. Assuming everybody's healthy, Razor, on the back end, we know that Miller will play. I think that McAvoy will play on Tuesday. Grizz will not play. The, other, the big question mark is Carlo. Big, big question mark is, is Carlo. He's still, he's still probably two, let's just say weeks away, okay? But let's play the game of everybody being healthy, partner, heading into the, let's say, the final week of the season. D pairs. Do you go Grizz and McAvoy, and you go try Riley with, with Carlo, um, or or and, and then I'm I'm assuming Lausanne and Kevin Miller is is that what you do? Yeah, I, I would I would think come playoff time the way that Grizz and McAvoy played defense together this year, I think the way they shut down the teams they were playing against their. Their analytical numbers were off the charts, five on five. So I think you put them together as the top pair. Uh, and then assuming Riley fits in, I think it's easier. You know, Carlo can play. He, the way he plays is a little easier to play with than McAvoy, just in his solidness. And, and when he's mm -hmm. gone, he's he just shuts things down. So that makes sense. And then, man, that's a pretty good fifth and sixth all of a sudden, right? When you're looking at Lausanne and a healthy Miller, it, again, we're talking hypotheticals here. If those two guys are healthy, that's a great fifth and sixth pairing that they're going to eat all the penalty killing numbers. They're going to fill in it. Like that's, that's a solid back end. It is a solid back end. I will say this though. They need to work on their zone exits. If this, cause this team up front will not be effective razor if they can't get the puck out of their own zone with good, clean passes. Yeah. We know that McAvoy and Grizz can do that. Grizz's biggest issue has been staying healthy this year. Yeah. Uh, you know, first passes are going to have to be great. They're, they're going to have to be. But I think you said it best earlier. It gives Bruins the team hope, their fans hope. But hope is great for selling tickets per se. And there aren't many tickets to be sold this year. Results yeah. are what really are going to drive. So they're going to have to be great, but but I I think it's I think this team, I really do. If everybody is healthy, this team is going to come down to. It's not if the forwards can score. I think they will. Can the forwards get the puck from the D? Mm -hmm. That's going to be it. If the Bruins can move the puck and not get hemmed in their own zone, I think they're going to be okay. What that means, I guess only time will tell. But it's better now. Let's also affect it, Tuca. <laughs> Tuka has to stay healthy, but that's just a, that a little, little, just that little question. <laughs> Big matzo ball back there, right? Oh my God, is that a huge? That's one of those gigantic New York City matzo balls, right yeah, there. Yeah, that's right. And so, uh, you know what? It's a good way to end hey, the show. It's, you know, you the, the, the end of the day, it's a better 
they're a better team today than they were yesterday. And right. Being in the dressing room, there's more. We talk about energy all the year. They're more energy. They're more excited. They're sitting there saying, "All right, this is this is this is going to be fun." Right. And you don't mind giving up draft picks. I know, and neither do I. You yeah. don't mind it. You're 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 a believer in that. You you can't you know you just can't throw them away per se. No. But you don't mind them giving up the draft, especially one from each for the next two years. It's not two coming up. That's right. You, 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 these are spaced out as second round pick. If you, it's going to be in the bottom half of the second round, uh, you're, there's no NHL player guarantee there. So we do yeah. what you have to do this year. All right. Well, the team is better. Um, and uh, let's, let's look from our perspective. Let's hope. Oh, let's just hope it's a blast. Yeah. Yeah. It makes it a lot more fun. Um, yeah. I like the hat today. A good solid B hat. Uh, by the just way, this hat's for my buddy. Just a simple B from my uh, my buddy Bob Craig, uh, phenomenal guy who has been a huge uh, supporter of uh, my adult camps at uh, Warrior that you've also been a, a great part yeah. of. Uh, Centerman Capital. He's got some very cool food businesses, and he's a huge hockey hockey nut. And uh, so, thanks for the lid, uh, Bobby, as well. So we get uh, Centerman Cap. Every, all of his funds are named after hockey stuff. So it's just uh, fantastic. And anyways, I love getting new lids. So bringing them <laughs> out there. All right. We, we've gone um, we've gone long enough here, but it's worth it. If something happens later in the day, Razor, if it's needed, we'll jump on for a couple of minutes, give a quick analysis. Folks, also at 2.30 uh, on Nesson, there's going to be a trade deadline show, 2, 2.30 to 4 o'clock on Monday. And then we're back at it tomorrow, Tuesday, the Bruins play the Buffalo Sabres. You're, we're together, right? On Tuesday. Yeah, night? I'm on we're, Tuesday. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Okay, so, great. But anything, look, if something, yeah, if something comes up, we'll hit it again here. Meanwhile, uh, the Boston Bruins make some deals, and uh, well, they sure are making things interesting, and they're keeping us talking. Have a wonderful Monday, everybody. Really enjoy that coffee.